Welcome to another installment of the Underground Lounge. How y'all doing today? I am Lou Will, AKA Lemon Pepper. I'm half your good time today. The other half of that party is my co-host and my brother, Plastic Cup Boy, none other than Spank Horton. And today in the lounge, another special guest to come kick it and have a dope conversation with us about all things music, culture, and entertainment. My dear brother, Mr. Thanksgiving, <laughs> Grammy Award winning. <laughs> Generation Now CEO. Yes, sir. What's up, Drum? What's up, my brother? What's up, man? How What's you up, doing? What's up, Spank? What up, Drum? How's everything? Um, Philly in the building. Philly Come is on, definitely man. in the building. You got to say it too, Lou. Philly in the building. Yeah, <laughs> we got him. We got him. So you know I'm an honorary North Philly guy. Absolutely. Yeah. honorary North Philly guy, man. They, they still love me on them parts, man. Absolutely. What's up, my brother? How's everything? How's um, life? Life is incredible, man. It feels good to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Man, listen, we, when we talked about Filming in Atlanta and filming in my backyard, we wanted to make sure we invited people that were authentic to what we were trying to get across to people, man. We wanted to speak to everybody that's a part of culture, that's a part of shifting culture, that's a part of changing the game, changing the narrative, how we look at music, how we look at sports, entertainment, in the city of Atlanta that's brought it out to the world. And I was like, man, we got to get my brother DJ Drum on here. Nah, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, And, and, and Grammy Award winning. Yeah, that's an amazing uh, title to have in front of my name. I, I don't, I don't. There's a lot of things that I, I felt like <clears throat> I, I would accomplish, and a lot of things I wanted to accomplish. Um, but I didn't know if I, I saw that one coming. Mm. Not uh, gonna be. I'm not gonna I wanna, lie. That's why I want to ask you, Drum, with your background in trap music, southern hip hop, the Gangsta Grills collections, and we'll get into all of that. Mm-hmm. You got your Grammy. With Tyler how the Creator, <laughs> how did that even come about? How did that? How did that? How did that collab happen? Yeah, it's crazy, man. Um, <clears throat> you know, just to take it back a little bit, I, I've been a fan um, and been watching the career of Tyler and our future since the beginning. Um, and we we actually met probably in about tw- 2010 um, when they the, the first show they did in Atlanta. Uh, they had a show at the Tabernacle, and um, they wound up. I was I was still at Hot 107.9 at the time. I had Gangsta Girls Radio, and the whole uh, collective Our Future came. We did an interview, and I remember, you know, Tyler really like telling me that he was a fan and he grew up on my stuff and and things like that. So I went to the uh, Tabernacle show after the interview, and I was in the building, and he he like told the crowd I was like, "Yo, shot the DJ drama." He was like, "Man, one day I'm a." Had this guy yell all over my shit, you know. What I'm saying that would be crazy, <laughs> you know. Fast forward, um, ten years later, um, during COVID, I got a I got a phone call um, from from Tyler, and he was like, "Yo, I I, I got this idea that I want to run by you." So we talked about it a little bit, and he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna send you the music. I'm, I'm gonna send you the music, so you can check it out. I want you to, um, you know." See, see how you feel about it. Never wound up sending me the music. A couple weeks passed. I was like, yo, what's up? Like, what are we doing? So then he wound up hitting me. It was like, yo, can you uh, fly to LA? You know, and this was a time everybody wasn't flying. It didn't feel like flying. Yeah. And I was, you know, in Atlanta, we was wide. Lemon Pepper, you know, yeah, we was wide yeah, open. Yeah, so yeah. We was close. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we was close. <laughs> it, was, it, it didn't bother me one bit. So I was like, yeah. So, and and the crazy thing about Tyler, man, he he's such a genius and he's such like a, a one man machine. Like he 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 originally told me the idea. He told me that he wanted to do this album called Call Me If You Get Lost. And that he, you know, he he had just won a Grammy for uh his last album, um, for Igor. He had won the best rap album, which he didn't really feel like was an actual like rap hip hop album. Right. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, Y'all really want to get back. Him- I remember him being outspoken about that, even at the Grammys. Right, he and he wanted to get yeah. back to like you know spitting and, and letting niggas know he could really he could really bar up. <clears throat> so when he originally played me the music, he had actually <clears throat> excuse me, he had actually found some random vocals of mine, like not even from like a Jeezy, a Wayne, a a, 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 a Meek tape. It was just like some random drum vocals, and it placed them just to see how it would sound in proper places. So I was like, yo, this guy's like, he's yeah, he's just- He gets a, it. Yeah. Yeah. He, had a, he had a clear vision of what he wanted. Clear to vision of what he wanted to do. So then, you know, I went in and did my thing. And, you know, normally most times when I work on projects, I, I like to like 
be in my own zone, not really be around the, the artists and everything, and kind of just like get into my get into my and my mode and, and and do my part. With Tyler, it was a little different because you know I went in and I I just I did more material than even necessary. Like I did multiple takes during songs, and then he would just say some shit like, "Yo, just say like." You're on a boat somewhere in Switzerland, and I was like, "I'm on a boat," and it was like, he, I could just see him outside the booth, like, "Oh my god, this is crazy!" <laughs> so, but you feel like, like, does this match? Does this make sense? I, no, for me it did. I mean, because I again, like, I, there's been various times in my career, even with Gangster Grills. <clears throat> you know, Gangster Grills started as like a very southern trap, street orientated brand. Right. But as time went on, I always wanted to grow the brand. So I wound up doing tapes with people like Pharrell, mm -hmm. with people like um, Chris Brown, you know, just kind of stepping out of the box. And like even like the Pharrell tape, you know, was very inspirational, even for Call Me If You Get Lost, because that was one of those tapes that like T and a whole generation of of kids of like, you know, his his same interests really grew up on. And that was like a mesh of like, this world, the the street brand, Gangster Grills, and then Pharrell coming together. So Tyler was is like the next coming of that. So I knew it was special. Lake knew it was special. Um, we had we did about Lake. three sessions. Yeah, shout out to Lake. Out Lake. Literally, Lake came in the second session and was like, "Yo, y'all gonna win a Grammy for this." Um, so we did the project. We kept it super secret. I remember doing multiple interviews over COVID. You know, people was asking me what I was working on, and I would say, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I just, you know, I didn't let nobody know. I said, I got something special. Um, and then, you know, he dropped the first song, Lumberjack. People heard my voice on it. Um, they thought I was just on the song. Then the album came out, and, you know, I was literally all over it. And, you know, it was like, I, I give a lot of credit to Tyler because I really feel like he really revitalized Gangsta Grills for a generation that, you know, may have not have been familiar, the, the nostalgic, mm -hmm. nostalgia of it, you know what I'm saying? And then when we won a Grammy, it was just like, it was, you know, it was interesting because the day of the Grammys, um, I actually had to perform at uh, J. Cole's Dreamville Festival, so I didn't go to the Grammys. I went to, um, I was in uh, North Carolina and I had a... That's a hell of a place to win your first Grammy, bro. <laughs> well, go Check this out. Well, go <laughs> so I'm in North Carolina. I'm about to perform. I'm about to do a, a DJ drama gangster girl why would, set. Why wouldn't you... You wouldn't skip that performance for that? Listen listen to the performance. It was you got the deposit, bro. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> got to go get that back in. My fault. Go ahead. It was, it was DJ Drama Gangsta Grills featuring T.I., Lil Wayne, and Jeezy. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So it was, you know, it's like... It's tough right there. We was about to fly out there for that. Yeah. We was flying out there for that. We want... Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. I missed it for... I don't know what I, what happened, but mm. go ahead. Oh, the kid, fair reason. Mm -hmm. Um, So literally as soon as I get... Um, to the festival, you know, I'm I'm sitting down with um, uh, I think Wayno and Rob Markman. We're doing an interview, and Wayno goes, "Justin, it's just been announced, uh, best rap album of the year. Call me if you get lost." And I'm like, you know, I'm 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 really having a moment because you know it was it was very like full circle for me because here I am about to go on stage with. Three artists that mean so much to my career that I I literally you know started my career with in so many ways and then I went my 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 first Grammy for Call Me If You Get Lost for a, a mixtape series that I started in a four four like twenty some years ago like you know I mean it's, it's what dreams are made of man I want to I want to ask on 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 piggyback off of that who would you say you probably ain't gonna pick one. Uh, here we go. <laughs> no, because you know I'm a real fan. Drama. We don't really get the you know behind behind closed doors. Right, we we, 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 we kick out right. shit. We had these talks, but I want to know who's on who's on your mount. One, I want to know who's on your Mount Rushmore of Gangster Grills. You mm. know, give me four. We could say I want to say four series. Give me four series that's on your your Mount Rushmore of Gangster Grills, and then I'm gonna ask which one of those guys would you give the credit to really kicking the door in for the Gangster Grills. All right, so I'm going to answer the second question first. Um, and it's kind of a two-part. I'm going to be, I'm gonna have to be honest and fair. So I will say when it comes to who do I give the credit for for kicking off Gangster Grills, um, so before 
T.I., Gangsta Grills was just like what mixtapes used to be back in the day, like a collaboration of all the hottest songs mm -hmm. right. that were out. You know, it was, you would go look at the playlist and see what, you know, whatever the newest songs were. It was a very self-orientated tape. So it was following that, that blueprint, that pattern. Because of Tip, I was able to create... Um, uh, a, a, a mini street album where the only place you could get that music was right there. We did um, mm -hmm. T.I. and P.S.C. In the Streets Meets Gangsta Girls, the first volume. And that was what, you know, every Gangsta Girls after that was built upon. You know, it was, that was the basis of why others wanted to do Gangsta Girls. You know, this was a time when, when mixtapes were changing from, you know, being like, you know, DJ focused and various... Artists instead, and then just being music. like being original music, being one person. So you know, I always have to you know tip my hat to tip, um, you know, for really us you know collaborating in that opportunity and putting that together. And then you know, the probably the the first artist that I did a tape with that was somewhat of an unknown artist, and that you know the tape took off was Jeezy. You know, when me and Jeezy did the first In the Streets, you know, when they were first handing those CDs out, they weren't saying this is the new Young Jeezy. They were saying, yo, this is the new Gangsta Grills. Mm -hmm. And anybody who's from that era remembers this all blue cover, you know, Jeezy sitting in, a, um, sitting down with an um, exclusive game, long jersey on, mm -hmm. you know, saying In the Streets. And that tape right there was like, you know, it, it took all, it, it was, it, there was nowhere you could go in the, in the, in the southeast and, and not hear um, it, the first Jeezy mixtape. And the scene was set with the and, BMF and, and squad. the scene was set, you know. Everything, just that time and how he came out, the scene was set. It was Nobody set. had Atlanta fucked up like Jeezy. Mm. At all. And, you know, it was like the whole tape was going in the club and the music did not exist without my voice or my drops on it. So wow. literally you, you were forced to have to hear me because... You would have to just play the music off the tape, you know what I'm saying? So you would go in a club, and you know I'd be screaming all over the records, and it, it was it was no <laughs> escape. Get, me. You started to get flack for that. I see you just post something about uh, talking about you know the record fire of this nigga yapping. Oh, yeah. oh man, I've been dealing with that my whole career. You know they either love me or they hate me. I say they gotta respect it, but you know the, <laughs> people be talking about. You know, the only I'm the reason why they made a, a no DJ version of a no DJ. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the reason why they did that. Like, what what year was this? Paint, paint us the picture for this people was, that wasn't in the south. What this, year was this? This was like 04. Um, I, I, if I'm not mistaken me and tips tape probably came out at the end of 03 in the streets uh the first Jeezy project came out in 04 mm. and then trap or die came out january 25th 2005 and the reason why i remember that date is because you know we did a, a huge party of visions uh, um a mixtape release party and before trap or die the a release date for a mixtape was non-existent. Right. Like that right. didn't, there were no release dates for mixtapes. You just would go to the store and it would You'll be out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You right. would see it, but because- you had, to, you had to go to the flea market. You had to go to the flea <laughs> market. Every Saturday and go check to see what and they see had. what was out. coming out. You know what I mean? You might you might go on a mixtape website and see what was new and then hope either order it or go to the store and see if it was out. But because of Trap or Die, like we had a, a set- like, all right, this is the day the tape's coming out, when it's going to be released, this is when we're celebrating, and hence, there it is. And it was, like like y'all said, like, it was it was what a time, you know? Obviously, um, uh, the world and the culture is is getting a, a piece of what it was like because of uh, uh, the BMF series, but, like, you know, it, it's really a very unexplainable time in Atlanta to 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 be a part of and to... I, I knew back then it was a movie in the making. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I had the pleasure of experiencing that as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I played with Allen Iverson. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I went, I went to the he club. Was, he was there. Yeah. And um, I remember him going on stage, and all of us we had to stay in the crowd. But they they went up on the stage. But I, I just remember seeing trash cans of um, uh, Cristal at the time. Oh yeah. Cristal bottles. So I thought that was a normal thing in the club, like. Every so everybody, everybody just had walk one. up. Right. Everybody yeah. just grab one. Everybody had a bottle of crystal. You literally can walk up, get a bottle out of the like the trash cans, and just get bottle. And when I say trash cans, they was just filled to the top with ice and crystal in the big ass mm. commercial trash bins. So that was my first 
experience. And Chuck went up on stage with a bunch of dudes. And I just remember it was one dude in particular seemed like he was in charge. He had cornrows, yeah, like, long ass white t-shirt. Looked like could have been related to Chuck to the almost. Side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like looked like they could have been related, but mm -hmm. he was just, but mm -hmm. you could tell he was in charge. And everybody just kept saying BMF, BMF. Mind you, I'm 17, 18 years old. I don't know what y'all, I don't know what's happening. You know what I'm saying? That was my my experience with seeing Big Meech in the club and they impact on Atlanta and where it went from there. I mean, they changed culture in so many ways, like making it rain, you know what I'm saying? Like the way the way people would That's a debate too. Yeah, we had that debate. We talked to Mr. Magic about it too. Mr. Magic said Mr. Magic said JD started making it rain. <laughs> I, I'm not saying J, JD may have. I'm I'm but there was nobody that made it rain like BMF. Like BMF. Yeah. And we all can attest to that. Yeah, so I'm I'm not gonna take nothing. <laughs> I'm not gonna take nothing from Jermaine Dupree. Hey, you know hey, what I mean? J, JD will probably that. say that. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. We could attest to that. Yeah, it was a different type of rain that was dropping. It, it was, was a that the was thunderstorm. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> 50, 60,000, 100,000, and you thought that was normal, because that's that's your first experience seeing that shit. Did you, when that's you was coming to ATL, you yeah, see that? I saw it. I saw it plenty of times. But seeing in, up north in Philly, we was getting lap dances, five, ten dollars. That was it. <laughs> for the whole song. That was out. That's it. A lot of, lot of twirlies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we go to land. I'm like, hold on. I got to get more than five dollars? What's yeah. going on? Man, what? And you was getting shamed, too. Shout yeah. out DJ Nando. All them guys. <laughs> Yo, bro, oh, yeah, guys ain't doing all that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Poverty. Yeah, they... So. they Man, let me get uh, let me get five, five, six, <laughs> just so the DJ stay off. Of you mm. know what I'm saying? But Jeezy uh, went crazy. Tip is the guy that. Yeah, I was trying to get away from the other part of your question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Okay. So you saying Mount Rushmore of Project. artists or just series like series that come in against grills? Let's go series. Let's go series. Yeah. All right. Okay. So if we're gonna go series, um. If we go series, that's hard, you know. It's always hard because I got I don't and there's so many tastes with so many artists. But if we talk about the most the most um monumental series that um are influential to Gangster Girls and Mount Rushmore, obviously Jeezy is there. Mm -hmm. Um obviously Wayne is there. Um I'm gonna go fab, there is no competition. Mm. I'm a, that's, a, that's that one kind of slept on. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Gucci. I'm gonna go me and Gucci, and then I'm gonna have to do honorable mention and just put the Dream Chaser series. In Dream there. Chasers, okay. I gotta put yeah. the Dream Chaser series in there too. I love that. Yeah. How, how did your collab with Outkast come about? That's one of my because wow, that's one of my question. personal favorite joints of yours, the Art of Storytelling uh, that. Part Four. For looking. And I I wanted to ask how did how did that come about? Because that's like that's my shit. Uh, good. Thanks, thanks for asking that, Will. Uh, <laughs> I've never been asked before. Journalism, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, it's crazy because I was just talking about this with my trainer, Lil Rod, who who um, is is Dungeon Family, Outcast Family, um, and I realized so that record came out two thousand seven. The only other Outcast record that's come out after my Outcast record is a record called Royal Flush that came in two thousand eight. So it's fair to say I have this second to last Outcast record in mm. existence. Um, but the way the record came about, so Outcast is like definitely probably, you know, if not number one, top three greatest hip hop groups of all time Facts. for me. Um, they are one of the reasons why I, I came and moved to Atlanta. Uh, I'll never forget um, driving to Atlanta probably for the first time with my, my pop, um, bumping Southern Playlistic uh, Cadillac music. And you know, just just the the vibe of of me really being introduced to the city and deciding to come to school down here. So you know, I definitely like Outcast has always been very monumental to my life and you know uh, my 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 feelings towards hip hop. Um, so that record came about. I, I got a I got a phone call maybe in like two thousand. I think about 2006, um, Big Boy, Andre, and their manager at the time, Blue Williams, uh, called me and was like, yo, we want to do an Outcast Gangster Grills. So I was like, what, what time, <laughs> what place, where do I need to be? Um, so, you know, it, we, we, we started discussing, like, actually doing a project, doing the Gangster Grills. You know, I was super hyped, super excited. 
Couldn't wait for it. I was on fire at the time. Outcast obviously is outcast. Um, probably about maybe like four or five months later, uh, they called me back and was like, look, man, um, we hate to give you this call, but you know, we're working on a movie Idle Wild, we're working on the soundtrack. And honestly, we don't have time to do the tape like we wanted to do. Um, but, you know, we do want to offer you something. How would you feel about if we gave you a, a song for your album? So I was like, nigga, hell what? <laughs> of course. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm here I am super excited. Like, oh, I'm about to have an album. This, this is when I, I did my very first album. Um, I had just got my record deal with uh, Atlantic Grand Hustle, um, Grand Hustle Atlantic. And, you know... Anybody who knows music and an artist when they do their first album, it's like it's like the culmination of your whole life. Like you want to put everything into your first album. Mm -hmm. So I start sending uh, three thousand beats, mind you. Like I said at the time, I'm I'm hot as fish grease. So I'm sending this man. You at if you can think of every hot producer that was around was in that had? era. I had beats from him, and I was sending them to him, and he was saying nay to everything, mm. like everything. I couldn't get this man to, to, you know, get on a record. So and then in my head, I'm like, oh, this is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. So then uh, come 2007, January, uh, the infamous raid happens. You know, we... we Right. We, we we go to jail for bootlegging and racketeering. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know we got to go back. But, it, you know, it's just right. part of the outcast story. Mm -hmm. So me and me and Cannon get knocked. You know, we do our we do our hard time, our, our quick 24 hours. <laughs> get hit with the Rico. So I get out. So Cannon had made this beat for me. At the time, I was doing this. Um, I did this Jim Jones mixtape called Seven Day Theory. That was the last tape I did right before we got locked up. And Jim had this beat at the very beginning of that tape, and I, I asked Cannon to make me a beat like that. So I had this beat. Um, Lake was managing Marsha Ambrosius um, around that time, and I sent I sent Lake and Marsha the beat, Marsha Ambrosius from the group Flow Tree, mm -hmm. um, Philly. Shout to Philly, and I was, you know, and she was like, "What's the vibe?" And I, you know, I'm 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 coming fresh off the raid. I'm like, "Yo, I need you to just." Say like, yo, nothing can stop us. We not going nowhere. Like, you know, I'm I'm really on my like motivational like man. They think yeah. it's over for me. <laughs> so she literally like takes what I tell her and and makes a hook out of it. I send it to three thousand. I I I texted him that. Now nah, I emailed. We wasn't texting nothing yet. I think I emailed him to be. The nigga says to me, "Give me twenty four hours." Mind you, I've been sending this beat, this man beats for seven months. Mm -hmm. I send him this one beat with this hook, and he says, "Give me twenty four hours." Next day, he sends me back the legendary uh, uh, verse that that is now the Art of Storytelling Part Four, and I, I I lost my mind at the time, you know. And and this, the, you remember, this was around the time when when uh, Three Stacks was going on a crazy feature run, mm -hmm. like. He did Walk It Out. He did the uh, I think the John Legend record. He did my record. So then I took it to I took it to Big. Um, I, I went to Stangonia um, to get Big on my album. I think I had like three songs that I played for him. I don't even know why I had any other options for him um, besides that record. Yeah, I, I don't know. What, <laughs> I, I think I like played him like two other ones, then played him now. He's like, nigga, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so then he he um. He's like, I'm going to do this record. And Big Boy actually is the one that named it the Artist Storytelling Part 4. And the rest is history, man. I, I, I literally can say and say that, I, you know, I'm probably the only DJ that actually has an Outkast record. And just, you know, as a, a as an artist, too. DJ, produce whatever, the fact that I, I, I literally have an Outkast record is, you know, definitely in, in one of my, um, my, my highest moments of my career. Tell me one that got away. Oh, I can tell you a couple. <laughs> uh, Still thinking about it. Thank you. Outcast will be one, the whole project. Yeah, Outcast will be one. Um, the Nicki Minaj, Be Me Up Scotty was supposed to be a Gangsta Grills. Mm. Um, it's crazy because I they just put it on um, streaming platforms uh, a few weeks ago, but uh, Days Before Rodeo, Travis Scott, mm -hmm. that was supposed to be a Gangsta Grills. Yeah. Um, me, Gucci, and Drake had been talking about and worked on some records to make a Gangsta Grills. Um, I think, are there any other ones? Other records that got away. 
Yeah, I mean those are some big ones right there. Oh, they big sure. yeah. Cause you dabbed in some, you dabbed in some R and B. You had Dream. Dream. Um, I did. I did. CB. I know you did CB. I did CB. Mm -hmm. I know it's not. You can't really speak these names, but I did a R Kelly one. I did CB. I did. No, I they, speak R Kelly they, all the time they, on it. They, <laughs> look, hey, drunk. If you're looking for some bullshit to get into today, <laughs> that's your boy here. <laughs> <laughs> so I did CB. I did. Um, I did Jeremiah. The late nights. Did, uh, fuck it, Long. fuck it, drunk. Go on, give us our Kelly story. <laughs> 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 I don't really have a, a story for the tape. I mean, Kel, you know, I would, Kel's called me to do the tape. Um, he invited me to the crib. You know, I remember going to the crib when Chicago. I mean, he was super like um, gracious, and you know. Cool, talented. I remember him just like, you know, kind of walking me through how he had been working on the records, and he was he was doing it kind of like Wheezy style, like freestyling over other people's beats at the time. Not freestyling, but singing over other people's uh, beats at the time. But um, you know, I don't, I don't got no wild R. Kelly story. I, I do. That nigga is a serial cheater in basketball. <laughs> I heard you got to keep passing him the you ball. You got to pass him the ball. Yeah, that, he had yeah, a team. They literally passed him the ball until he shot the ball. And if he missed a shot, he would call a foul. <laughs> he would call the foul. By himself, he would call a foul. <laughs> Nigga missed a shot. And he said, ah, foul. <laughs> said, man, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> so we start walking down the court. This nigga said, I sold 80 million records. That's a foul. I said, not out here, motherfucker. <laughs> Check ball. We going down the court, bro. Nah, I'm not playing that. Nah, I sold eight million records. Right, right <laughs> on the basketball. That's when right. that, that's when niggas don't have like when they saw you. That's that be your go to. That's like yeah. when you don't know what to say. You be like, nigga, I'm rich. Like, right, right, right. I sold eight million records. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he did that. <laughs> yeah, I believe. And we weren't and we wasn't going. It ruined it ruined the whole. It ruined Where was this at? It was in yeah, Chicago. It was in Atlanta. It was in Atlanta. Oh, yeah, it was in hell. Atlanta. It might have passed. What in was the Chicago? Teams? Man, it, I remember it being me, my homeboy D, my homeboy Tay. They probably don't want me to say their names in the R. Kelly story, but they ain't there now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't remember who else. And he had five. He came with his own five. Mm. It was so a how did pick this, up game? Yeah, how did the yeah, game how does go? Yeah, yeah, we was at the uh, studio. They asked us. He was looking for people to hoop with. Okay. Oh, okay. And they called us to the studio. Oh, we I got up. you. Mm. Weirdest shit I ever experienced in my life. <laughs> Kel's got a little game though, though, right? I, I, shoot. Would, I wouldn't know, man. Like he called a foul. Shit, it was yeah, him. it was rigged up for him. Yeah. Like I don't know if he actually could play. That's hilarious. He dropped thirty on R. Kelly. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah. I remember that, but I, but I we talked about gangster grills. We talked about impact in the streets. How did the raid come about? Because now that music is streamed and the game is so different now. What could you what could you tell the average person like me that don't know much about copying music and mixtapes and cause they charge you with racketeering power? Who led racketeering, yep. Under the Rico. I was the first nigga in Atlanta in the music business. To get a Rico. To get a Rico. <laughs> Shout out drum. <laughs> Shout out drum. <laughs> Kick this shit off on drum. My bad, y'all. They've been flowing I, after I, that. I, I apologize. <laughs> um, um, what what was that what was that experience? Cause you know, I, you you work in a lot of street energy with artists, but yeah, I, I could imagine you ain't you ain't see that. Never seen yourself. that. I definitely never saw that coming. Yeah. Um. You know, it was it was crazy because when you if you when people if you go back and and do the research or like look at it um, the, on YouTube or something like when they came and raided our studios again they they charged us with Rico at the time I didn't know what Rico was. You know what I mean? Until I got out at, out the next day on bond, I had, I think we had a hundred thousand dollar bond. Me and Cannon wound up getting locked up, and you know I, I got on the phone with Tip. I was I was still DJing for Tip at the time. I was signed to him as an artist through Grand Hustle Atlantic, and he was like, "You good?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm good." Like, I'm I'm I'm, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? He like, "Have you checked your bank account?" And I was like, "What you mean?" He's like, "Bro, they hit you with the Rico. Like, go look at your bank account." So I went on bankofamerica.com. The fact that Tip, like, right. <laughs> he knows. Yeah, tip knew. <laughs> tip knew. <laughs> that shit said 0. 0. 0.00. And mm. I shed a thug tear, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God damn. And, and, you know, back then, I was new to making money. Like, I'm, you know, I come from a, 
middle class background, like I didn't know nothing about no investments, nothing about no, you know, retirement funds. No, right. I just used to look at my money in the bank every day and just make sure it was still make sure, there. Make sure still it was there. there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it shit went from the high six figures at the time to zero. Like, Whew. and it was over 24 hours. In 24 <laughs> they hours. They didn't give you your bank, shit back or nothing? They didn't, they didn't give me none of that back. We had two accounts. One was um, actually a, uh, where we had our album budget in, and then the other was kind of like the DJ drama, like the DJ or whatever I had at the time account. And because they said they couldn't differentiate what money was for what, they just kept all of it. Now they they actually never gave us like one of those like uh, fines. I think like you know they had a two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine. I, shit, I wish they had gave me the two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine and gave me my bank account back. back. Yeah, yeah, I'd have been better off that way. But um, so. What I will say is, when they came, when they when they came and raided us, they definitely thought they was gonna find more than just mixtapes, for sure. You know, they want they said they wound up confiscating like fifty thousand CDs. They took our CDs. They took our cars. But on the news report, the the officer says, you know, normally in these situations, we find guns and drugs. Mm -hmm. This time we didn't. Like they didn't find a a pistol, a, a spliff, no nothing. Thank God they came on a Monday morning. Like, Because <laughs> <laughs> if it was Friday night? It would have been a whole different scenario. <laughs> so, you know, all they found was CDs. So, you know what I mean? When the story was told, you know, we was like, the culture stood up for us in a, in a way. Like, and it, it was a big, you know, it was a big moment in like hip hop history because it was like, Here's these guys that are at the top of the food chain in the mixtape game, and they get knocked for making mixtapes. And mixtapes have always been, been, around. Yeah. Uh, been around, been a part of the culture, meant so much to so many careers. And it just like, you know, it was, it kind of like the game was changing. And the, the actual specific law that they, they wound up trying to get us on was this law called the True Name Law, where if you, at the time when you make a, a physical CD, you have to have an address on the back of a CD. So if you think about any of your old CDs, like from the record labels, if you oh, think yeah, about like a address, yeah, you know, it have it would have the back, address yeah. of the record label. Yeah. When we was making mixtapes, they had those black those back covers, right? Because you were opening up the fold out, and you know the track list would be on the inside. So mm -hmm. we didn't have no address on there. So that was the law that they they uh, technically got us on. But, you know, in hindsight, the shit made me more famous than I ever was. You know, I wound up on the cover of Billboard. I remember it was just a different type of notoriety and fame. Like, you know, I feel like people had known who I was at the time. But after the raid, it was like, it was, it was just, it was different. It was, it was definitely different. And it worked out in my favor. My record label called me hype as shit. Like, <laughs> of course they did. Man, what? We can't play, pay for this type of publicity. How fast can you get us the album? You know? <laughs> what, was your, what was your first move after, after, the, after the raid? Like, getting back on your feet? I ran, we ran right to the radio station. Um, um, got on the radio, was talking shit. I remember I did, I did a gig. And then I put a mixtape out like two weeks later. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> which is crazy thinking about it because, you know, and it was like, I think it was like Gangsta Girl 16, me on the cover. And, you know, because I, I ain't going to lie. Like, when that when that happened, I felt some some guilt at the time because, you know, like, I, here's a kid. I grew up loving mixtapes, loving DJs, loving hip-hop. And I'm like, you know, and people, it was almost like, damn, a mixtape's going to be dead. Are they going to die? And I was like, I can't let this culture that I love so much that – you know, got me to this point. I, I don't want to see it fall because of cause of me, like I because it was on my shoulders, you know what I'm saying? So um for me it was really about and I remember just doing a lot of interviews and I, you know, I I, I always say this like I've I've never been I never like that question when people say like where do you see yourself in five years or ten years or whatever? Like cool shit. I've never been good at that type of question. But when I was doing my interviews, I remember saying, like, just in the interview, like, yo, this is not my, my final story or this is not the, the, the last chapter in my book. This is just part of the story. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy to look back, like, so many years later and to think about what a moment in time that was. And then to think about 
it's people now that know who I am or know my work that don't even know that it even ever happened. Mm. Now you got generation now, man. Yes, sir. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm go slow. Let's talk Jack first. Okay. How did you first? How did you first meet Jack? I'll tell you my. I'll tell you my Jack story. <laughs> that went viral. <laughs> well, nah, that was the second Jack. Oh, second, yeah. so, okay. That was the second one. But I remember being in the studio, Mean Street Studios, the studio um, um, I, I originally built, um, and my homeboy came in the studio and was like, "Yo, uh, he's from Atlanta, so he's like, hey, it's this, it's this white boy you gotta check out. His name Jack Harlow." I was like, okay. And I remember going to his Instagram. He had probably like 7,000 followers at the time. Mm-hmm. And I checked him out. Uh, the kid looked like Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember on his page, he had this one video of him like performing. And it was a decent sized crowd. Um, I wound up finding out later like it was... A, a festival. It wasn't his crowd. It was a, a um, festival crowd. Hilarious. But but he was rocking. Right. So I was like, oh, this kid got something going. So I followed him. And my homeboy was like, hey, why'd you follow him? Like, nah, you can't. Don't show him so soon. I was like, oh, it's too late now. Nah, I already followed him. He followed me right back. Um, and then about maybe a month or two later. So uh, a side sidebar to this story. Um, around this time, we have this. Uh, a uh, friend, mutual friend, a great guy named KY, who is known as KY Engineering. He's actually from Kentucky, and he's um, one of the greatest engineers in hip hop. He's done all my hey, projects. The first engineer to put his tag on a song. Ooh. First engineer, <laughs> you hear you hear it on uh, Waka Flocka Records. You you hear him on Two Chains albums. You've heard him on on Drake projects. You've heard him on Meek Mills. Mm-hmm. I, I, matter of fact, KY Engineering is the uh, engineer for Dreams and Nightmares. Mm-hmm. Um, so KY winds up telling Lake, hey, I got something I want to bring to you when it's time. I'm, I'm still working on it. So maybe about two months later, Jack winds up coming to Mean Streets. And uh, I hear he's in the building. I go to the A room to go meet him. Um, we wind up talking a little bit. And, um, you know, I'm like, yo, you know, so, you know, Tell me about yourself, yada, yada, yada. What are your interests? Then we start talking movies. And Jack asked me a question. He was like, yo, what's a movie like that nobody would like think you would like or know or something like that? And I just, I randomly said this movie name called E2 Ma Tambien. It's like a Brazilian film. And he was so blown away that I, I, I knew what this movie was and he knew what the movie was. And we kind of like bonded right there. So then the next day... KY winds up calling me and Lake and was like, yo, that kid that came to y'all studio last night, Jack Harlow, that's the kid from Kentucky. That's the kid I've been working with that I was going to bring to y'all. So we was like, oh, okay. So we started connecting the dots. And Jack wound up telling me, you know, the day that I followed him, he saw it. He was with his homeboy and he was like, yo, uh, DJ Drama just followed me. He was like, I'm going to wind up signing the drum. And it was funny because when we were, when we actually, uh, when we, we were in a process of signing Jack, I remember him asking us something about Uzi. And this was kind of during the time when we was going through a little turmoil with Uzi. Mm-hmm. And we we kind of like had to play it off. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, it's, everything's no. good. Like, <laughs> that's, that's nothing, you right. know? And so we wound up uh, signing Jack um, in 20, the end of 2017, maybe 2018. And the kid was always... You know, he always had his a vision. He was always focused. You know, I was I, what I what I really loved about him from the beginning was just like he was authentic to himself. He wasn't trying to be anything he wasn't. You know, I I That's a fact. I, I liked his friend group. You know, he was witty. You know, he he just was a he's he's a good human being. He's a right. he's just a good guy. You know, and I appreciated that. And he was very he had a lot of ambition and. You know, he he knew where he wanted to be and wanted to go within, you know, hip hop. Um, so, you know, I was and and I think that it really it helped too because, you know, him being a white rapper from Kentucky, um, but him having, you know, DJ Drama, Don Cannon, Lake, Generation Now, you know, the guys responsible for gangster grills and, you know, uh, th- 
all this legacy behind him for him to stand on our shoulders, you know, I I, I think kind of like was a good cosign for somebody like him. So I, I think it really worked out well. And then, you know, I've, I think I've always been one that to, I like going against the grain. I like doing things that people say you can't do or like they might not see or believe it because it was a lot of non-believers for mm. sure. A lot of... A lot of people early on was like, I don't know about this one. You know what I mean? Did they and, jump um, on his records in the future? Like, did they jump on his records? Because some rappers saying like, ah, I don't see it. Most likely, for most sure. Likely, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. For sure. You know, I mean, I, a lot of people wound up having to double back. <laughs> I remember Jack first coming around with KY. What'd you think? I was skeptical. <laughs> you was skeptical. one. I was, was, I, I was, I was skeptical. I mean, but you can't fault yeah, anybody yeah, too because, right. like I said, he Kentucky. He, yeah. he he was himself, and it it was just out of the blue. So I had, you know, I was rapping, and uh, I wanted people to listen to my project, kind of, kind of get an idea. Mm -hmm. And we were in the studio, and Jack was in there with his brother, and but every record I played, they in the back like. Like, yo, the white boys, if nobody like my shit, right, you know, he like <laughs> they like my shit. So uh, finally, Jack kind of got comfortable to come around the console. So he came around. He was like, yo. Is that KY Studio? Yeah, it's okay. like, over, over at KY Joy. So he like, yo, man, you actually know how to rap, man. This shit sounds good. So, we, you know, me and Jack, we vibing and shit. So I leaned over to KY. I'm like, we're the white boys, man. You know <laughs> so he, like, oh. He said, man, it's Jack Harlow here, a rapper, and that's his brother. They from Kentucky, so they've been kicking it with me. You know what I'm saying? I said, oh, he's like, they straight? Like, he got that that nervous, like, they cool? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I said, no, 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 they super straight. They 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 vibing out. I'm like, right. I just want to know who they are. They they in here vibing. Yeah. So me and Jack and his brother, we hit it off. Ended up going out that night. And Jack was like, bro, I don't even drink, but I get drunk with you. Mm -hmm. And we got wasted that night. Oh, that, wow. And that's, that created our friendship. And from there, we went viral, and I became the face of coronavirus. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get Legend a picture? Legendary. Mm, Legendary. Mm, mm, mm. That ties in, but that ties into everything, bro. Like, meeting Jack in 2017, 2018, fast forward to running into him in Magic, and he got the number one record in the country. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? He had the number one record in the country when we ran into him in Magic with KY. Yeah, Kev was, did a, Kev was, did a, uh, a weekend out on Bahrain. Oh, in Bahrain. And oh, them. oh, that the, just recently. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was dope as hell. Yeah, dope as hell. You, you was there? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, I was just because Jack went there. We just got back from Italy. Matter of fact, um, we met Jack out in Milan uh, to work on something, and he he was telling us he was going out there right after that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was dope as hell. Yeah. How you how you like the CEO hat? How you like this side of the I, game? I enjoy it. I really do. Um, it was a nice pivot. You know, it's it's interesting because, like, you know, I mean, I've always felt like I've been a man of many hats, no pun intended, but... Do got a lot of hats. You do got a lot of hats. <laughs> you, got a lot of hats bro. <laughs> you know, for me, it was like, it was almost like the uh, natural progression of, of where I needed to go with my career or, you know, like, um, going, starting from being a mixtape DJ to... You know, then becoming an artist and to being an A and R to, you know, uh, you know, being in like an executive, like because I've been discovering and 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 introducing new music to the world since the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, all that starts from like my early mixtape roots of wanting to put new records out or have exclusives before anybody else hears them. You know what I mean? So, you know, that plays a, a big part in the discovery of that makes artists. Sense. I never looked at it like that. Yeah, like, yeah. I always say I've always been addicted to new shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and even in my age, like even being in my 40s and, you know, I, I, I watch how as DJs or people in the culture grow older, you know, that it, it's harder for them to engage or understand the, the newer generations that come after. But for me, I think because of how I DJ or, or who I DJ for or where I DJ, you know, it, it's never been a challenge for me. Like, I've always been able to embrace the youth, you know, and, and, and kind of, like, um, understand, like, what's about to come or, 
you know, what what's about to to break or, you know, just be able to to discover and find new talent. So, you know, it's really exciting, man. Like it's one thing to be successful for yourself. It's another thing to be able to make other people successful. Oh, so yeah. to be able to like watch, you know, these young kids literally go from wide eyed, you know, aspiring um, artists to fucking superstars, rich as shit. Mm -hmm. where, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, shout out to Uzi. Yeah, damn. Shout to <laughs> shout to Vert, like an, <laughs> another one. Like, <laughs> you know, to to have met Vert, like this this kid from Philly who had all the energy in the world and watch him become who he is now. It's just like, it's, you know, it's, it's a great feeling, man. Like it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And, um, you know, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a hat. I, I take a lot of pride in wearing and, um, you know, I, I look forward to continuing, um, to continue to, you know, keep discovering new talents, keep, you know, putting out new artists and like you know trying to keep create superstars you still yeah. tapped in with the uh philly because right now philly doing a whole drill now though the drill. yeah man rest in peace to uh ybc dude What's i just right. he got right. he, he uh passed um but yeah i i, I i'm tapped in okay yeah i'm tapped in yeah i'm tapped in a little bit just a little bit yeah <laughs> i see the video you working with new artists but you but you circling black back with some legends too greatest of all trappers you yeah got another absolutely. one coming with gucci yep shout out about that yeah, uh, Wap reached out to me. Me and me and Guap, I, I I I talked on a couple songs of his in the last couple years, but man, it's probably the first tape we done did together. Oh, it's got to be in over a decade, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, he he called me. He said he he had a new project he wanted to do. It was, it's literally no features. It's called Greatest of All Trappers. Um, super tape, like you know he. It's, it's it's gold grill Gucci. This this fat Gucci on there, <laughs> like you know what I mean. This 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 is this is not clone wop. This is right, right. Clone this is that movie wop, and you know it's always fun for me. Gucci is one of those one of those um, artists or uh, collaborators that I, I really you know have had great chemistry with. Um, I've had very like classic projects that have meant a lot to people and everything. So you know I was just in there talking my shit. They I said on there what I say I said. Uh, Drum, they asked you why you the goat. I said, I'm not the goat. I'm the ghost. I'm the greatest of all shit talkers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> little bars. Like the little ghost. Bars. <laughs> like that one. Um, the ghost yeah. of the underground. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a fun one, man. That was fun. <laughs> Who would you see you doing uh, against the grill with? Vet or a new guy right now? Dropping one. A vet and an, a new guy? Yeah. Oh, um, I mean, it was. Doing one with with Hove would be incredible. Facts. Oh yeah, for sure. Three thousand would be amazing. I know he said he don't want rap no more, but mm -hmm. if I could get all three thousand gangster girls, that'd be incredible. You could do something with the flute. You could do something with it. Gangster girl flute. <laughs> oh, um, Black Thought. I, I was whisper still... on that Black Thought. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> you can't yell on the. You can't, you can't yell on the. Can't yell on that. <laughs> that's the, I've talked in a, a, a monotone tone, but yeah. I ain't one. I don't think I've ever whispered on it. <laughs> <laughs> that might be some shit. <laughs> What would I damn on an all flute tape? That'd mm. be crazy. That's what I'm saying. That's good. Black thought would be yeah, a good. One. Black thought is because that's yeah. full circle. You know mm -hmm. that for me, that's another person that like, you know, I came up the root, the root, the roots is the reason why I was the first initial uh moment for me that I realized like, damn, you could really do this hip hop shit. Like mm. they were the first people that I saw actually get a record deal, be on Rap City, you know, perform, go on tour with the Fugees and you know, so it's it's because of the roots that I, you know, I, I've realized this could really happen. So I've always wanted to do a black thought tape. And then new guys, um it's, it's always so many, man. Um a, a female would be dope, you know. I would love I would love to do one with like maybe Lotto, uh Anicia is dope. Um I don't know if Burnt Fire is this is really counts as new anymore. Brent been in the game for, game for a minute, but I, I would I would like to do a, a Brent Fires, Fires tape. Yeah. yeah, I can see that Brent Fires and Draw. I can see that. Yeah. You gotta go get you some of that country money, Draw. Yeah, I'm not. Country I'm not going crazy it's right definitely now. Definitely going it's crazy. Crossing over right now. You might have to go. Get What's our boy a name? Shabuzi. 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 <laughs> Shabuzi would be fine. Shout out to Shabuzi. He's super dope. Mm -hmm. That'd be crazy. He's super dope. 
Before you run out, drum, I gotta ask you a little sports talk. You know, okay. Y'all off, y'all off, Philly Bulls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Football season about to start up. Let's get it. Mm-hmm. You excited about the? You excited? You are an Eagles fan, right? Before uh, I go too far, of course I am. I'm just making sure. Uh. <laughs> I'm just making sure. I was gonna say good night. It's over. <laughs> one Eagles fan. There's, there is one Atlanta team I am a fan of. Mm-hmm. Brace. Come on. I just figured I'd, I'd throw out the not obvious. <laughs> You're, you're what, a Hawks man? United. United. Oh. Why United? The soccer team. Soccer team, yeah. Why is that the only Because that's the only team that didn't exist when I. Uh, got down oh, okay. Here. I was about to so say they weird. got the Philadelphia Union. They got to. Got... I got to give Atlanta one team. <laughs> and I, like, I'm a Phillies fan. I'm a Sixers fan. I'm an Eagles fan. All right. But Flyers, I guess so. Yeah, the soccer team, I'm going to go with the United. Hilarious. You feel good. What, what do you think uh, Eagles going to be this year? I'm, I'm, I'm glad to. I like I like to see Saquon there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're gonna make the playoffs. I see. I think we're gonna make the playoffs. Saying? See what I'm saying? We made I, the playoffs last year, I, I, and we was trash. Yeah, and which is crazy to think, right? It, even the, even our even our last record year. last year is crazy because the games we won, we barely won those. Uh huh. We definitely so, did. Um. We going to play better than we played last year. For sure. Yeah. Y'all won, y'all won playoff game better, you think? No, I think two. Two? Yeah. Mm. Now, if we, and if we two playoff games better and we, we lead the NFC, then we going to be straight. And so that means we going to the chip. Exactly. Mm. So, we go. Come on now. We going yeah. to the chip. One way to look at it. PG is <laughs> sixer now. You excited about that? Oh, yeah. That should be fun. That should be fun. Um, Where you at with it, Spank? Spank? Spank not an NB guy. I am an MB guy. Oh, Stop saying that, not, man. You not. You said it publicly. Bro. What I said was, I wouldn't mind a trade with MB. I was in my feelings too, though. Okay. After we lost, when I was in it? my feelings. Okay, you know hey, I, I respect year? that. Yeah, the I end of the season. I respect yeah. you yeah. doing it. Okay. I was in my feelings. I'm gonna be honest. I respect that. But now, because I said it wasn't guaranteed, it was gonna get a Paul George or somebody like that. But now that it's guaranteed that we got Paul George. It's going down. Oh, yeah. Let's nah. go. That boy MB done got banned from the crib, but he say he ain't good at home, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because of the Olympics? Cameroon said, hey, come back over here, buddy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> he chose to play with us. Come on, he man. He didn't even look right at the USA uniform. You don't think he looked right? Yeah. You think he should have he, he should have went and played with How us? How you going to be on the US and then have a problem then walk over there and be like, see, coach? <laughs> what the heck? That's very rare of somebody to do what he did, though. Because most, because most international players go yeah, play for they their go play for their they country. Do. I don't do. understand. He knew where to go. He could have played for Cameroon. He could have played for France. Is it France? Yeah, right. France. It was France. It's France. That's why they kept moving. USA. So if yeah. you get the opportunity, are you going to play for a team that you know you're getting a goal with? Or did you come in and I had an opportunity. Sit. I shouldn't say this publicly, but I feel like sharing today. <laughs> go ahead, let's share. Come on. <laughs> you had the opportunity to go play for who? We listening. I shouldn't say that. But fuck it, I'm going to say it. Once upon a time, the Dominican Republic reached out to me. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Dominican Lou. <laughs> they thought I was Dominican. They thought you was, thought you was Dominican? <laughs> what was on your Wikipedia or something? <laughs> I don't know, but look, <coughs> whether I was Dominican or not, they made it their business to try to get me as close to Dominican as they could. Oh, well, I said, nah, I'm going to have to live with that the rest of my life. I'm right, that's pretend. funny. But yeah, no. Nah. I came with you over there. I the bet you would. Yeah, yeah I would have <laughs> did it. I, I would have I did it. What's, what's ne- Tell me what's next, Drone. What you got What you got going? We got Gucci uh, popping off. Yeah. Um, uh, where, where Uzi at? Where, uh, we know Uzi. We know Jack. Speak to Kai Cash, man. Let the people man, know what's Kai going Cash on. Kai Cash is a new Youngin, artist. Youngin, shout out to Kai Cash. Yeah. Kai Cash is a new artist we just signed. Super dope, super lyrical. Um, I, I'm very excited about him. You know, um, he had he has hip hop in his lineage, mm-hmm. in his, in his sure. veins. You know, he he grew shout out the root. You know, we're getting old when we cool with the rapper's dad. Right, yeah, right. Crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm shout out the root. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, he, he just he he reminds me of. Of, uh, the of the rap I grew up on, you know what I mean. Like his wordplay is incredible. A very distinct voice, you know. I, I love artists that have a lot of ambition and that that have vision. So, you know, I'm super excited to um for us to you know put this music out and you know for it to touch the people. Drake and Kendrick. 
Who was that on that, uh, Drum, with the whole... <laughs> what was you said on that, Drum? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I was on the sideline. Because <laughs> <laughs> last time he got pulled in the beef, it was between uh, Meek and Drake. So. Multiple times yeah. I got pulled uh, in yeah. beef. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. yeah, with the Jeezy and the Gucci. Yeah, yeah you always get pulled in. Yeah, but you ain't and get the pulled in the time. name. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was watching like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the sidelines with popcorn. Right, right. And they trying to say it's the biggest rap beef ever, but oh, ever, because ever? I, I think people are um, prisoners of the moment. Exactly. But I mean, hip hop is at a place that has never been as well. So. What I will say is, I mean, I think that I think that Jay and Nas is, is very legendary. I think, sure. you know, that's one of the greatest hip hop battles of all time. Tupac, Biggie, Tupac, Biggie. Mm -hmm. But I, I will say that the the quantity of quality that we got from yeah. the Drake and Kendrick uh, beef is like the that, actual records. Yeah, right. the, the body of the body of work that came out of that like yeah. was is at another level. And they put and, the streaming numbers on each song. I was like, wow. Yeah, I mean, and now we can see it because of that. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Before we was just listening to the radio and mm -hmm. you know, hearing the records and off, the top, on of, off the top of your head though, what's the craziest rap beef that that not you experienced, but as fans that you remember the impact that it had on you? Like I remember like Jeezy and Gucci being like a thing in Atlanta. No, that's the one. Like a real. Oh no, that's the one. The, it like affected cloudy. Everybody. Like if you saw either one of them, oh, no, no, no. It was kind of like not a even little if you uneasy. saw either one of them. I heard stories about like security niggas that did security that kids went to school together, Damn. and it was like this nigga was on this side, this nigga's kid was on this side, this nigga's kid was on that side. Down to and the it was kids. Issues. Wow. Yeah, like it, it boiled down to every part of life in Atlanta because of that. Yeah. Like if you couldn't go to the club and play this this person's music or that person's music, mm -hmm. so and so was in there. So and so it just it got cloudy for a minute. <laughs> nah, for real. <laughs> no, nah, that would that's definitely the one that I would say like from a uh uh like being a part of it and just from a you know, a, as a, a student of the game and the culture, like the one that I, I say is is like next level. What would you, what would you say, Spain? Well, I'm up north still. Well, not now, but when I was up north, I'm always gonna go Tupac Biggie. Yeah. I'm always gonna go that because You lived I, through that, OG? You said what? You lived through that. Like, I lived through that, yeah. I was yeah. young, but, you know, I lived through that, though. How old? How, you was like a teenager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a teenager. I might have been freshman year in college. See, it, was, it was high school. High school? It was, it was, soft, it was senior year. He was a freshman year, college. senior year, yeah. You that much older than me? Me and, me and uh, Drum, what you? Man. I'm, I'm 1978, so. Yeah, 78, 78. All right, yeah. we just same age, same age. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see. <laughs> <laughs> hit, hit, hit us with the cab. Yeah. <laughs> Funny guy over there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Go hit us with the date. Yeah. Sorry. Like Charlemagne say, 1978. Yeah, 1900. That's <laughs> yeah. crazy how they say 1900. That shit hurts. Hey, no, nah, I ain't gonna lie, Drum. That Meek and Drake beef was uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I'm sure it was for you. Yeah, it was. Uh, it yeah. was on you was in Toronto at the time, wasn't you? Yeah, and mm. I, and but I was flying the flag. I was dream chasing. Was dream DC. chasing. Right. Yeah, right. I, it's probably me, Meek, and O'Malley. We probably got the most dream chaser chains out of right. everybody. You <laughs> right. know what I'm right. saying? Right. Yeah. So it was. And you in Toronto with them things was, on? Yeah, <laughs> like you had to draw a line. But I, yeah. I had to stand. I had to stand with my team. Man, we did OVO right. weekend that year. Kev, we headlined, oh, the, uh, what's the name? Oh, yeah. my God. Drake came backstage. Come on, y'all, let's get a picture. Kev said, mm-mm, we know what you're doing. <laughs> he did. Get out of here. But that's why That's why he's such a slick motherfucker, too, because uh -huh. then he went and put your name in the song. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. The sixth he, man. That's what I'm talking about. I'm six <laughs> man, like Lou Will. <laughs> like, he got, like, yeah, I'm going to win this good, stick. man. He I'm going to win this over. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I probably was the happiest person in the world once, <laughs> once they got back together. I seen them boys on stage in Boston. Right. You know that Forrest Whitaker meme? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yes, Thank things you. can enjoy music again. Cause you remember, you, you was in a club, and Drake came on. Not only did Drake came on, when back to back came on. Oh hey, man, we used to be stiff as boards in the club. You, nigga, you with me? You better not move. Hey man, I ain't gonna lie, it was a bop move. though. Was, I had to do a little something. It was no. a bop. It was tough. It was tough. Yeah. Me, I love you, but it was a bop. It was tough. Then the breakdown, you love it, then you got it. I'm like, I'm listening to the club, like y'all don't. 
You had to sit there and take your lick. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. You had to sit and just take it, bro. I don't know if I can say names, but I'll sit anyway. We was in Toronto at uh, uh, one of Drake parties. We was at one of his parties at uh, Rugs. We chilling, and he just constantly playing Drake and everybody else. They ain't playing no meat, though. Rugs went to the DJ. Hey, man. I heard about this. Be oh, fair. This is during All-Star. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> be fair. All-Star. Play some meek, man. It was during All-Star. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. If we got a bleep Rugs name, I would do it. If not, play that song. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call him and see if it's cool. Yeah, it was during All-Star. I remember that. Mm. That was a good time. That was a good time, though. Well, we've been talking about rappers and athletes since we on, you know, the panel right here. Something came to mind that we was trying to figure out mm. who be having, like, the most kids between rappers Ooh. and athletes. Rappers, 1,000%. Between rappers and athletes. See, there's, there's, the, see, there's some athletes. Tariq Hill yeah. got like nine or ten this year. He had his tenth one this year or ninth? Athletes have secret babies. They have secret babies. Rappers yeah. have multiple babies. Rappers have. <laughs> no, I'm going to say, ra I'm gonna say rappers. I'm going to say rappers. say rappers? Yeah. Especially the younger ones. Now, like, the ones probably in the... Between the twenties and the thirties, twenties and thirties. Oh yeah, because you know, young boy, young boy got like a young boy. Yeah. He got like a what, an eight piece, a nine piece. Yeah, he up there. Um, I, I know Dirk is probably in, in his mid thirties by now. Dirk got a, he got a, he got a ball team. <laughs> <laughs> got a basketball team. Kodak got a nice little pedigree. Oh man. Then some of the old heads like corrupt. DMX had like, sheesh. Oh yeah, I'm ten be piece. Right. Old Nick Cannon, where you falling ODB. at? Nick Cannon, Cannon falling rappers or where Nick you falling Nick Cannon is a rapper. He's a rapper. falling rapper? Yeah, he's falling right, rappers. All right, all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's y'all team. <laughs> huh? Money bag, y'all got a Money, lot? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey. Baby. Oh, we didn't even say the king, Future. Future. Uh, yeah. Baby, I'm going to say Cam baby, Newton. Cam, is Cam a Newton got game. eight. Oh, Cam Newton got eight. Cam Newton got Cam eight. Newton got, uh, yeah, yeah, Cam Newton got Cam, eight. Cam, Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill. Cromarty. They all football players. They all Maybe football, but we a, said athletes, though. Maybe it's just rappers versus football players. Basketball players. Football uh, niggas do be having more kids than basketball, it seems. Mm. More free time. Is that what it is? They play once a week. They play more free time. <laughs> I was thinking, see, I don't want to. Nah, they might take that the wrong way. Who's going to take it the wrong way? Uh-oh. Because they wear helmets so they don't get noticed as much. So then they start, when they get it, start getting it, they just be blasting and everything. <laughs> That's what I thought it was. <laughs> as a ball player, maybe you could correct that or tell me I'm wrong. So <laughs> he's not disagreeing. So, <laughs> yeah, ball player. Ball. I think Sean Kemp got a lot of kids, don't he? He might. Man, if Sean Kemp had kids, we'd know one of them niggas be jumping out the fucking gym. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tripping. Maybe I'm tripping. No, nah, I think that's a football ball players baby. probably have more secret babies, though. More secret babies? For sure. Mm. For sure. I think comedians. Is it comedians out there with a lot of kids? Eddie got a lot. Eddie up there. Oh, yeah. Eddie's up Eddie there. Eddie up there. Yeah. Wait, Eddie he got, got like four or five? That's nah. Five. That's Eddie got... I think he's like around seven. I think Eddie's around there. seven. Yeah, Eddie seven got... is a lot. Seven, eight. Uh, who else? Who? I can't even I don't know imagine. What Richard had. I don't know how many. Richard had a few. Richard had a few, though. Yeah, baby making is a rapper's game, man. Yeah, it's a rapper's game. Y'all got that. One time right. they getting protection is a gun. <laughs> <laughs> got them. What? Yeah, man. <laughs> Shit, me. Gotta be. Mm. You would think it would be more of a ball player thing too, because they're in different cities all the time. They, yeah. I mean, so are, so are artists. Oh yeah, well, artists too. True. And different cities, but then you know they trying to you know create that legacy and have a young them to go right. on and keep Lord, playing. You playing know, playing the league. True too. Oh no, man! You don't know what. So, do you think it's more? All right. On top of that, do you think, think it's, it's more ball player? player. What you say? I think it's just football player. I, I don't think he's wrong on that. Do you think it's more athletes that have kids that go into sports, or more rappers that have kids that go into music? Great question. Mm, that is a great question. Do rappers make more rappers or do athletes make more athletes? Uh, damn, athletes that's a great question. Athletes. I'm going to say athletes make more athletes. Got him. I'm going to say that. More athletes. Because you got Will Smith and uh, Jaden. Then you got, oh, you got Ghostface and. Ghostface kid. Yeah, Ghostface got a kid. 
transgender now. Hey, listen. And oh, he, you oh, know, oh, and he oh. into the... See, that's the, that's the part where what? I'm like, hold. Uh, what? I mean, we're not even going to get yeah, this on yeah, tape. Yeah, I don't think Goldface know. So, uh, Goldface got a kid, and they're in the music industry. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, I know most deaths... Um, daughter, yes. Yeah, Benzino mm -hmm. and... Um, Benzino and Cola Ray. Ray. Yep. There we so go. Hold on now. Uh, we, we back on track. Come on, we back on track. Yeah. We've been back on track. Nah, what are you talking about? You was supposed to just keep it going, bro. We got Diddy and King. Diddy and King Combs, yeah. Um, no, so it's a couple. It's a few, man. It's a lot. It's a lot out here. Think it's a lot. Just keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> no. Tipping all, tip, tip, yep. all his kids. Tipping his daughter singing. Right, yep. There you go. Son's rapping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I don't them know. kids is dope. Super. Yeah. The money hard. The money hard. I, I fucked with the money. Buddy. Buddy is fire. Yeah. Buddy is fire. Yeah. Buddy look like his pop on the Soul Train line right now. Like, <laughs> Soul Train line, but he look like he older than all of them. Yeah, <laughs> he look like he older than Tip. So. Yeah, like he just his maturity level. Yeah, but like, he's incredible though. Super talented. Uh, King do his thing. Uh, baby girl, I don't know baby girl name. Eris is gonna be a star. Mm -hmm. Eris. Eris, Eris is on her way. Eris. She's out of here. Uh, I saw more. her perform at his uh his 20th anniversary of trap music. That was yeah, that, was, that, was, that was dope. Yeah, that, that was dope. That was dope. That was dope. Uh, Two Chain's son gonna do something. We don't know what he's but gonna Halo, do, but he's gonna do yeah, something. Halo stock. He got a lot of charisma. And then even, I mean, if he wasn't a rapper, but like even Drake comes from. Uh, his dad was in the music business, mm -hmm. so it's like you know count. Yeah. So then on the athlete side, it's way more athletes though. For Off sure. Off the top of my head, Scotty Pippen, Curry, Pippen, uh, yeah, yeah. Gary Payton, Ronnie, Curry, yep. Ronnie. Um, I just saw a highlight from uh, Dominique yeah, Wilkins' son. I, yeah. Asante. Yeah. Dominique Wilkins' son. Just saw his yeah. highlight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Gilbert then, Arenas. Mello. Mello. Asante yeah. Samuels, his son is in the league. He Wade. Yeah, the, yeah, all the, um, all the balls. balls. <laughs> all the balls. All yeah. the balls. A woman said that, no, y'all. She said yeah. that. Man. A woman said that, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <a> great, <laughs> great title for a podcast, though. Great title for a podcast. <laughs> all the balls. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, the Boozer, Boozer twins, yeah. Boozer twins. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, my nephew, because I'm ball. I used to ball, then my nephew balling. Come on now, huh? Yeah, shout out to my nephew. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's go. All right. <laughs> Lou, Lou hate that when I, I thought we were talking about fashion. Think, off I don't think, I Play that Gratz drum. Can you tell us, dude, who Gratz was? Can you tell him? Simon Gratz? I know exactly yes. who Simon Gratz is. You yes. have to know. He's I know a ball player. I know he knows. Yes. Come on. He knows. I'm, I'm, no, I'm North them. Philly. Come yeah, on. I play for them. So you was there when she, no, she is older. She than was now. a uh, senior in my freshman. That's the freshman reason year. why I started playing ball because I saw him play. Oh, word! And I said, oh wow, because he was the number one player in high school. Oh, I remember. So what you was doing before that? that was there. Huh? What you was doing before that? Well, I was doing. I was just kicking, talking trash, messing. I was a bully back in the day too. You I mean, was a bully. I, that was a bully. It wasn't right to really? say I was a bully. I was. I, don't I always talk shit. I don't see that in your... If he was at Simon Gratz as a bully, he wasn't no. He wasn't bullying sucker niggas neither. Cause... Grats ain't no punks. Yeah, Grats was one of them schools. Grats yeah. was one of them schools. So then, after I saw that, I said, well, I was playing football too, though. I ain't never played for Grats, but I played middle league. I mean, uh, not middle, middle league. <laughs> little league. I played little league and stuff like that. <laughs> but when I got to high school, I was just, you know, flirting with the girls and stuff like that. But then I went to a game. I was like, oh, man. I saw all the cameras and all that. I said, oh, I want to do this. So my yeah. sophomore year, I started playing. I mean, you look looking for somebody beat up. Saw, That's how I you ended up at the game. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a nigga to whoop on. <laughs> what you was bullying for? Lunch money or just, just you just like to fight? I was just young and just stupid, man. But I was always this is what it was. I was a funny guy always, and I was always cool with the bullies. Mm -hmm. So they was bullying, so I was just following. I was just following. That. That's all it was. You weren't good you at tall bullying. back then. Yeah, I was tall back oh, then. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I, you know, I looked like that. The first time I remember uh, these guys jumped somebody, right? They're like, yo, Spank, why you ain't jump in? I'm like, man, y'all had him. He was on the ground. I was like, for you. What y'all need me to do? So from there on, I started adding on to the jumping in and stuff like that. That's why. That's I mean, you. These niggas was taking niggas except the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tokens. I yeah, definitely yeah, take tokens. Yeah. And sell them for a dollar. Tokens and passes. <laughs> yeah. Taking their passes. I retired from my bully stage early on. Early on? Yeah, this little Mexican boy got me right together. <laughs> 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 yes, he did. Yes, he did. I had a fucking, I'll never forget it. I had a fucking starter jacket, Pittsburgh Steelers. My dad was a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Mm -hmm. You know, the old the old school starters, you had to pull them joints over your head. Mm -hmm. Man, the kid get talking shit. My stupid ass say, hold on, let me take off my jacket. 
Man, I must have got that jacket about right, right here. here. Got I you. just started yeah. yeah. like I was at a fucking bounce house. I just <laughs> felt motherfuckers hear me. Mexican kid and his brothers, they done jumped on me, man. By the time I got my jacket off, they was gone. Right. And ever since then, I was I was done oh, messing with you. folks at school. But uh, Drive went to Central High. Yes, sir. I wanted to go there. Mm -hmm. I didn't pass the What test. part of town it is? Central is what? Alany? Yes, it's Alany. Yeah, that's Alany. Yeah. But it's not it's not like a neighborhood school. It's like the yeah. good school. It's a good school. Yeah, Central smart, and Dobbins was known yeah. like the good smart schools. And the pretty girls. Yeah, and the pretty girls, for sure. And we, girls' high was right in the street. Yeah, yeah. Well, every time at the end of school, sometimes other high schools will leave their school to come to their school, school. to see the let out, the yep. girls mm. come out and yeah. try to get their girls. Yeah, and come to our for school. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I didn't make it into Central. Uh, I didn't no. pass the test or whatever. Damn, uh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, Dobbins, I didn't pass the test. <laughs> yeah, I didn't make it. That's how I ended up at Grant. It sounded like you, your education was it was low special. <laughs> it was low. It wasn't special. <laughs> it was low though. I, I would say that it was just above special. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was just above just where enough. I didn't have to be in that class. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but you know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, uh, how but, close was you to that class? What you feel like? How close I was? Yeah. No, no, no. I was smart enough to make sure I wouldn't be that dumb to be, end up in that class though. You ain't gotta be dumb to be in that class. No, no, no. Well, mom used to teach. You gotta be special to be in that class. I wasn't that special. Let's say that. Yeah, you can have some issues. Yeah, you got some issues. I I made sure I didn't have that many issues to be in that class. Yeah, I was a C student. I admit to it. I just got by. Yeah, you wasn't getting by Central. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't getting at Central at all. My cousin went to Central. It's a good. It's a good. That's with the same time. Yeah, same time. Wow, oh, yeah. same age. Me and my cousin same age. Oh, okay, that's what's up. Oh. Seventy-eight. How how many years that is? Don't matter, this brother. Don't matter. Yeah, come on, man. What do you matter. mean? How many years that is? Twenty-one. You know, this is the first time I felt young in the room in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a, yeah. I'm a cherish this. I ain't been young in this the room in a while. Keeps twenty-one forever. Drive. Like, so uh, a friend of mine got married. Uh, Wayne, you know Wayne. Wayne got married in uh, Miami, yeah. and uh, I told Lou, "Pull up, man. Have a good time. Let's go." After the weekend was over, Lou hit me and said, "Hey, man." I thought I could party with y'all because y'all older. We chill, relax, have fun. Mm -hmm. Y'all party harder than the younger niggas. <laughs> no, we go hard. They don't stop drinking. Nah, yeah. they, they good. Yeah, I go mean, they're grabbing around a few times. They called the plastic cup yeah, boys. Yeah, for like, a reason. They don't stop. Yeah. yeah I knew I was in trouble when they had, it was a fountain. And you know, alcohol is expensive. And it's all liquor. <laughs> it was a fountain of liquor. Yeah, it's and all And you liquor. can just walk put up, your cup, up, put up. your yep. cup. Mm -hmm. yep. I said, these people really drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they won't stop. They won't stop. Nah, yeah, they keep going. And then, and then, wedding is over, reception is over, everything over. I'm like, finally, I'm going home, six o'clock flight. Leaving out of the reception, mm -hmm. they was giving out bottles. Yeah. I said, these motherfuckers do not. You take a souvenir. Stop. I did, I did. Yeah. I grabbed a few. You gotta do that. I grabbed a few. Shout out to Grand Coromino with that new Reposado. Yeah. Way, man. You congratulations. Know yeah, congrats, Wayne. Congrats. And Kev, congrats to both of y'all. Yeah, yeah. The rest of me too. I'm like a little zero point zero 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 one percentage. If you in there, you in there. Yeah, I'm in there though. I'm in there though. Yeah, yeah. though. Shouts out. Rest Kev up. always try to make sure we all, you know what I'm saying? Shouts out to Hard House, Fanatics, all that. We all a part see. of everything. Yeah, so. Kev, give me twenty five thousand dollars worth of stock. Twenty five thousand worth of stock? Yeah. Oh, we both said that. I both said that. Yes. All right. I'm gonna make yeah. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try and make it happen. Yes, we both said that. I told you you gave me some money one time. I told him to get it back if you mean it. One time we was having a good time. Out in Vegas, and uh, yeah. my boy was gambling. He was having some fun. I looked him in his eyes. I could, I, you know, my, I, I drank a little bit. I knew he was over his limit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nigga looked at me, went in his pocket, and handed me a twenty-five thousand dollar chip. Put it in my hand. Mm -hmm. I should have been drunk as he was because my stupid ass gave it back to him. I said, "Give it to me tomorrow if you mean it." Mm. I ain't got it. Yeah, you supposed to keep that. Was I was supposed to keep that. <laughs> that was shit I, you yeah. know what it was, though? I knew he was out of his mind. I, I, you know, I, I should have taken it. how much money I took from him from out of his mind. <laughs> you know, now I know. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't have missed it. No, nah, At all. He wouldn't have missed it. This is funny. Kevin give you a call. Yo, what you doing? I'm chilling. Hey, go down to the tables with me. I'm coming. Because if he win, he go look out. Because he look at you as good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what he was looking at you as. It's good luck. That's why you should have kept it. I wasn't gambling with him. Right. I, I wasn't, don't know. Yeah. It just felt funny. If he would have gave it to you, would you have went and uh, cashed it in or would you have taken it and I would have gambled? gambled. You would have gambled. gambled it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You gave me twenty five thousand in Vegas. That shit going on the table. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, I ain't tripping. So and the, and the, cool. I ain't and tripping. And then you might have wound up with nothing anyway. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Woohoo! This was shit. I threw that shit in there. I'd have did some shit with his money. I ain't never did with mine. <laughs> I'd have gambled his shit. <laughs> All in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, with no remorse. Hilarious. Hilarious. But Philly days, though. Let's talk about Philly days because uh, you left Philly early because you might as well say because you came to college down here. Yep. I left Shout in the 90s. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Came to San Diego. What made you come to Clark instead of a Philly school? I felt like if I went to Temple, it'd be like going to 13th year of high school. Back. Um. Cause you know, even when I was in high school, like we was going to to Temple for Spring Fling. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I was going to pen relays. Mm-hmm. To, Temple camps probably in the summer and stuff. Yeah, That's like the pen relays. Yeah, shout out to pen relays. What a yeah, time. Pen relays was a time, bro. Was, I actually ran at pen relays. I ran you? track too when I played basketball. That's fire. Yeah, yeah, was rough. yeah. pen relays. I Michael Johnson ran the same day I ran, bro. Wow, he ran the same day I ran. Now, it was late on the night, prime time and all that, but I ran around probably 12 p.m. It don't matter. It was still the same day. Come on now. Lou hate giving me my sports props, man. I, I want you to get everything you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> you be trying to put some of that shit on your tab. That, that extra sauce on there. Yeah. You, you ran the same day as Michael Johnson. I did. No BS. What he ran? He ran the, uh, the 200 and the, uh, yeah, the 200. All right, so I just came back from the Olympics. So what you run? What I ran? I ran the 400. That's one lap around. I ran a four. You did that? Yeah, four by four. You it got three. What was your time? Uh, I was like a 53. It was cool for a high school player. It was cool. You know, they running 44s and 45s in the professionals. Yeah. But in high school, 53. 50, 51 is real good. 52, 53 is like, okay. But I was only running because I played basketball. No, I get it. Yeah, I just, made me run I don't, I'm trying to, I, I was looking at you confused. I was trying to visualize it. I got pictures. No, because you know, too. no, got well, video? you know, I ain't got no video. Ain't no video yeah, you yeah. know, when we met, I, like it was like a Morgan Freeman thing. Like you was already old. Like that's the only, that's the only, like the spank you is today. That's the only spank I know. <laughs> we met when he first got drafted, John. When and you was that drafted, spank right there. We was in Old City. Uh, I think Chuck might have introduced us. Oh, uh, where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, Old City, like at the bars? Yeah, 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 yeah. He wasn't even supposed to be down. You Red Sky? It's crazy. Yeah, he wasn't even supposed Martini. to be down. Blue Martini? Remember, I remember all them spots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, right down Old City. Mm. So did we finish? I'm sorry. Why are you going to Clark? I'm oh, so I, I came to Clark. Um, <laughs> I had came to visit Atlanta. Um, with your dad, I remember you saying I came that. with my pop, and I came one summer, and it was, bro, the energy and the vibe, like, you know, being from Philly is a is is a different thing. It is. You know what I mean? Like the city of Philadelphia is a is a different is a different animal. Like you really have to be from there to to really understand get it and, under, yeah, and to yeah. know it. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, I it's it's sad to 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 feel this way, but you know, a lot of times you you have to leave to make it coming from Philly. You know what I'm saying? And it's 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 just unfortunate. And I know that, you know, there's a bunch of people that are trying to change this to make the more outlets and more opportunities in the city. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when <clears throat> in our era, that wasn't it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't the case at all. So and I just felt like I think I I think my pop um had pushed me somewhat to like um in the interest of going to a HBCU. Mm-hmm. So going to a historically black college was shout out. I went to interest. HBCU. I went to Lincoln. Shout out to Lincoln. Mm-hmm. I, I think I even did I, did I visit I applied in Lincoln? Um I might have. Mm-hmm. Um and it's crazy because I always thought I was gonna wind up in New York. My my dream was to like go to NYU and go to film school. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I came to visit Atlanta and I just did the vibe, the energy, the culture, like it just, it felt like a, like when I was choosing where I wanted to, to go to school, t- for me, it wasn't always just about the school. It was also about like, all right, where can I kind of like do my thing? Because I was already DJing at right, the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was like- you said Q and Juice was like- Yeah, that was, that was my inspiration for yeah. becoming a DJ. So- That's why you wear your hat like that? I never thought about that. He does wear his hat like that. Yeah, it? he wears his hat cocked to the back. Yeah, like I'm probably I'm gonna have to say that's the reason why. I don't know about that. Mm. Um, 
Shout out to the uh, y'all. Y'all reshot that too. That was so legendary. That was dope. That was dope. Yeah, that was yeah. fire. That was dope. That was so. I, I can't believe that I, I got I pulled that off. Like just that, just to be there with Queen Latifah and, right. and Omar Epps and. How know, did that come about? How did that come about? It came about because again, so like uh, Lou just mentioned, Juice is the reason why I became a DJ. I wanted to go see mm -hmm. Juice. When I was a kid, and and was like the movie to all the young people out there. So all movie. the young people, the young <laughs> for people sure, movie. for real. And I was super inspired by it. And somebody on my team had came about an idea of when we were working on my album about um about using juice as a concept of like of of I don't even remember if it was recreated or something, but when they said it, I had this idea like. Because I had just seen Omar Epps like literally two weeks after somebody on my team came to me about the idea. And I was like, damn, what if I could really get Omar Epps to do it with me? So I wound up calling O, running to buy him. At the time, um, he was working on, um, um, I, I have a- uh, Power. Is it Power? Yeah, yeah it's Power. Uh, he was Kanan. Doing, no, Raising Kanan. Kanan. Raising, Kanan. Raising Kanan. Kanan, that's what it is. He was doing Kanan, so he's like, yo, I'm interested, but I got to check my schedule. Because, mm -hmm. you know, he knew- how influential that movie was to me and right. to a mm -hmm. generation of DJs. Oh, yeah. um, so he was like, yo, it sounds dope. I'm definitely with it. I actually went to Jim Jones. And I, I, I asked Jim, like, yo, I got this idea. I want you to direct it. And Jim was like, oh, I'm in. And Jim, Jim was super, like, went all the way full throttle, like, you know, even when it came to, like, the um, the costume design. He wanted to execute and it. Find oh, it. Like, yeah. Yeah, Jim he wanted was, to make sure Jim it was, was executed Jim right. Jim was really in. So then, you know, I just, as I, as I went, like, once I got O's interest, I started going even further, like, damn, what if I could really get Raheem and Steele? Mm. I was like, damn, what if I could, what if I get Quinn Latifah to do it? Right. So I reached out to um, Shaquem, shout out to Shaquem. Shout out to Shaquem. And Sha, Sha uh, took it to La. There was some interest there. We actually wound up seeing each other at the Grammys for the uh, 50th uh, anniversary of hip hop. Hip -hop. Mm -hmm. And when we were on stage, I was part of that performance that year. And I, I told her what I wanted to do, and she was with it. And literally, she, like, right after the Grammys, I think we shot it like that two, this Grammys was on a Sunday, and she, her window was like that Tuesday. So I told Jim, like, yo, we got to get it done ASAP. So we did her part. We did. We shot the part with uh, Latifah first. Then I did the scene with with um, with O and uh, Raheem and Steele. And the fact that I, I really, like, got the pull, I, yeah, you pulled I, I, had, I made it happen and, like, you know, what it meant, what that movie means to me and just to sit here and, and look at myself with the cast, it's like, you know, that's, I, I, I have a lot of moments in my career where I'm, I'm super, like, almost humbled in a way, like, when I think about what I've been able to accomplish, and that definitely was one of them. That's one. Well, that was dope as hell. That's like me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get out of the humble part and get into my little cocky part. I did a voice for Tom and Jerry. Wow. That was my nah, that favorite was, that cartoon was growing up. And I got a call from the director. It was like, hey, I think we want to do something where we add to the Tom and Jerry cartoon where we do voices. We want y'all to be the alley cats, alley cats, the plastic cup boys. I said, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. And I did that. I was like, wow, I'm really doing a voice for Tom and Jerry. And that was like my favorite cartoon growing up. So I know exactly yeah. how you feel on that. That's you crazy. get residuals Thanks. for that, bro? Yeah, I still get a little, I still though. get a little couple of dollars. Yeah, you get like $2.50. Two, yeah, $2.50, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, yeah, yeah. I know them 2 dollars I'll be getting them little 2 dollars Yeah, I get a little couple of dollars here and there. Yeah, that's cool. That's I like dope. It. it was more about me just doing it, though. It was dope as hell. Nah, I get it. That's yeah. fire. I had yeah. a good time with that. That's probably something I like- I think you was in, you was, your, your voice was even in a trailer. You was in the official trailer, wasn't it? I might have. I can't remember. I might have. I might have. So. But it was the Ollie Cats where we always like was coming at time and all that. The vo voice voice uh, work is something that I've always been interested in, uh, like in doing shit like that. Mm -hmm. That's super dope too. Oh, work. Yeah. yeah, we got like a little segment in the stu in the heartbeat, you know, company where we trying to do voices and stuff like that. Hey man, keep me in mind, man. Up. You know, yeah, I got, huh. got a somewhat noticeable type voice. You know? yeah. <laughs> I'm a lot of a lot to do that. Gangsta grills. <laughs> That shit was all right. What? <laughs> that wasn't bad at all. Bad. <laughs> I've been drinking a little bit. Well, you definitely need a story, though, John. You definitely need a story. Yeah. Yeah, because I can see it. You've been from a long way from when you first started. This whole story, I can see it. 
I really can't. Well, I'm actually one uh, one one thing I didn't mention that I I do have coming up too is I just finished my book deal. Um, so I'm 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 doing two books. Um, Nigga, I asked you what was coming out. Now you want to talk books? You just remember, bro. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, bro. My they bad. got so much going on. Bro. Yeah, so That's I got. There. there you go. I'm I'm doing like a a memoir of some sort, and I'm also doing a children's. See, movie comes Man, after. How that. you forget two books? I, Come on, Spain. I, huh? He forgot two books. Yeah, my bad. Got well, you usually books. sign a two book deal. That's probably why. Yeah, they want to sign a one because like yo, it's gonna be good. Book, kid, At least sign two. So if it's a flop, real entertainment he business good. guy over here. <laughs> <laughs> so if it flop, we good. But if it do well, we got the second one. He knows his stuff. <laughs> hey, if you was to do a children's book, what would be your message to the kids? Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to give away too much, but... Um, <laughs> I'm just talking to this crazy ass nigga. Oh, you see me like, where that drum? What's he about to talk? I like, where that drum? I'm out of Oh, you talking to him? No, no, no. We out of this. Oh, yeah. He's talking to you. He's talking to you. He wasn't talking to me. Because drum, I knew he was going to give you what I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> he wasn't talking to me. Yo, I just saw a children's book. It's crazy. <laughs> they was talking about, talking about the whole boys and dating boys and stuff like that growing up. In a up. children's book? A children's book, yeah. Yeah, they put it in children's books where... Would you bring that home? No, not bring that home. Nah. Uh, if that's, I was to do a children's that's book... interesting. What would I do if I was to do a children's book? Hmm. I'd probably bring it back to back in the day how we used to be. Kids used to go outside and play. Right now, kids just play the games. Oh. iPad, stuff like that. So I'd probably try to bring... Old school type stuff. That book's not selling, bro. That book's not selling? No. Because you know where they're going to read that you book know. at? On the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to say, go outside. I was about to yeah. say, where do you think they're going to look at that book at? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I tried. Fall. This shit is a lost art, though. It is. It is. It is. Even the whole buying a CD, bro. Oh, man. That era right there. No. Yeah, for real. It was like the best. For it was. Me. I remember waiting in line. Waiting in line. Scene. I remember that. Yo. And then having to pick. Like, yes. I just seen somebody talk mm -hmm. about, like, even now when you think about kids and discovery of music, like, it was hard for us back in the day because you only had, like, two options, if yep. two, because yep. you only had. At $20 to spend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the CD was what? Between $9.99 and $16.99. Uh -huh. yep. So you, and you only was getting one, one. Maybe two of you was lucky. So, and that was your music. Now you pick up your phone, you can listen to anything. 10 million records under the world. You know what I'm saying? Do y'all remember when you had to pick? It was like, ah, I don't yeah, want yeah. this one or this Hell, one. Nigga, do you, re do you remember going in the record store and sampling the album? Yeah. Sampling yeah. the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to yeah. about a minute, yeah. Yeah. To about yeah. a minute yeah. of the song. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's how you made your pick. My, the first CD I ever bought with my own hard earned money was Snoop Dogg's uh, Dog Father. Wow. Dog Father, wow. I remember my first. My first was Low End Theory, Tribe Called Quest. Wow. My first CD I ever had, somebody bought it for me for Christmas, but it was um, uh, MC Hammer, You Can't Touch This. Mm. That's a good one. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to tell you why I picked Snoop Dogg, because I only had $10. Right. I couldn't gamble. Yeah. So I had to go with something I for yeah. sure knew. Yeah. Somebody that I knew for sure was going to get me some, so I picked Snoop Dogg. You know what would be a great question for you, Drum? I just thought about Cause this is a little uh, a debate. They saying who had the most heat after a mixtape. They always say Drake after his mixtape. They say Fifty Cent after his mixtape. They say Snoop. Snoop didn't really have a mixtape, but he was doing features with Dr. Dre and everybody. Okay. Who do you think was the hottest coming off of their mixtape? Yeah, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Oh, I forgot about Lil Wayne. My fault. How can I forget? Are we that? counting him too? Because he already had albums before that, though. He did. Yeah, he already had albums before that. If we're counting strictly off strictly of... Strictly off of straight off of mixtapes. Tapes, yeah. I'm going 50. I'm going 50. I'm, I'm going 50. Then Drake. Then Drake. I'll say but that. 50 too. first. Like, yeah, for sure. I mean, because 50 is the reasons why mixtapes became what they became, did. Yeah, right. Like, he's, you know, between him and Dipset, like, Dipset that had a lot, formula yeah. of a mixtape being like an album is, is the 50 Cent era. And then he was... Hottest, and I'll say fifth too because fifth literally dropped that album and then put a new mixtape out two weeks right after, after that. that, right? And right. then two weeks after that, another mm -hmm. unit radio, the unit radio coming tape. out. Like yep. he was flooding it and he was on fire. So, yeah, without question, 50. But 50. Wayne has to be in that conversation, yeah, Wayne definitely. And then I, I would Snoop 
comes from a different era, but when we just talk about like rookies who went their debut album like, yeah. straight from high school to the league, you mm -hmm. gotta put Snoop in that conversation too, for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah, well, I had a few arguments with that. We be having these little debates in yeah, my little like crew. Good, good rap combo. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. What's another great one? Comes to mind. What about who your favorite? Let's put a little pressure on the couch. Who your favorite athlete slash rapper? Oh, um, favorite <laughs> athlete slash rapper. Hmm. I'm going to go, how many, what do you want, three, four, five? Let's go five. Let's go top five. Cause this, 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 this is a lot of them out there now. I just heard a new one from Jalen Brown. I'm like, hold on, bro. Yeah, he go? just dropped the record. <laughs> it's featuring somebody. Uh, Ferg. ASAP Ferg? ASAP Ferg, yeah. All right, so number one, well, I don't, I don't know if I want to do an order, but. It don't have to be an order. Right, I'm, I'm going to go Shaq. Mm -hmm. He's the only one with a platinum uh, album. For sure. I'm gonna go Dame Dollars. Dame can really spit. Um, um, yeah, I throw Dion in there. Who? Must be the Dion money. Sanders. Must be the money. Dion. Dion, Dion had a hit. That was a hit. That was a hit. That was a hit. Okay, we could put Dion in there. Dion had a hit. Um, Dion in there. The nigga on the panel with a feature from Lil Wayne though. Right, damn. I represent Luke, the underground. Luke, Luke I'm really, I'm Luke like the... Spit, Luke could always, yeah. <laughs> Luke been around his rap shit his whole life, so. Yeah, exactly. Put Lou in there. Mm -hmm. And then I need one more. Uh, I, I mean, I, you know, even though most people ain't heard it, I'm going to put Chuck in there. Nah, put not Chuck. in there. Uh, uh, what was the name of that song? Oh, it was crazy. He was going Yo, crazy. he was going yeah. crazy. He was going crazy. That was probably there. the first drill album. Yeah. <laughs> hey, gangsta shit. Yeah. Uh, look, I can tell, I can tell this story because now he's told it in public. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. told us this story behind closed doors, but now he's he's told it. He said he got a call from David Stern to come up to the NBA offices in New York. Mm -hmm. He said he walk in the office, they got the album playing on the loudspeakers in the office. <laughs> he said, so he walk in thinking they feeling this shit. Yeah. <laughs> this nigga on there dropping f bombs, bro. And I ain't talking about fuck. No, <laughs> yeah, he no. Said he, crazy. Oh he said he go God. to uh, he go to David Stern office. And David Stern turns to him and said, "This what the fuck you trying to do to my league?" <laughs> <laughs> I think he was on that album. Hey, Chuck was tripping on that album. Chuck was going crazy on that going song. Going crazy. Bro. Oh, bro, that's an obvious one we missing, though. Kobe? Kobe? Kobe is there. Kobe was good. Shout out to 824 that just passed. Man, that's an obvious one out there, man. You got a man. Count Master. Oh, you got a mind shumper. Shump Master P don't count. Yeah. Oh, Sean. oh, yeah, I'm, I'm tripping. And Master P does count. Master, Master P, P count? Master, Master P, P count? played in the NBA. That count. He right. did, but he was rapper first. Bro, he played, he played in the NBA. NBA. Okay. Oh, Master right. P. That's the Shump. obvious one. I did it. I did Gangsta Girls with Shump. Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Emo. Shump is Shout out to Shump. Yeah. Sure. Come on. Yo, Shump, wow. You want, uh, man, you know, if you get bored, I got like, I got some records in the tuck if you want to put something together. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at it. Why you say if you get bored? Like, yeah, I ain't mad yeah, at it. You know, throw you know, it under the. This is DJ, DJ Drummer here. I know he ain't that, got but all, you don't throw that under the. He ain't got all day to deal with this shit, you know? That's like if Drum called me, like, oh, you want to go shoot around? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to do that, too. If you get bored, I'm... You know what I'm saying? You, know, <laughs> shoot you ain't got loops. shit to do this weekend, bro. You want to go fuck go around? Go, you know, go shoot a little bit. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> no, Shump, but, uh, Shump is in there. But I always... Is I it football players that rap? It's football players that produce. I hate that I AB. can't think of my man's name. Uh, AD Rap? I mean, uh, AP Rap? Major, Major, uh, Major Nine. Shout out oh, Major, yeah, Major Nine. Major Nine, yep. Producer, songwriter. Yeah, uh, Major Nine. And he got a couple records himself. Awesome. Victor Oladipo. Victor Sing. Yeah, and basketball player, yep. He can sing. KD do rap, but KD like me, he he, he, he just rap don't really put nothing out. He more produced though. I don't think he like rap rap. Mm -hmm. He more produced. Uh, I'm trying to think football players though. I don't D, think D Jack. I think D Jack had a. D Jack little... did have a label, Jackpot. Yeah. Yep. Uh. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. That I, I'm that sure we know it's of. More, though. That we know of. If yeah. you do, if you are an athlete you and you do who, rap, um, um, what's his name? Um, 
playing for the Lakers. Um, changes the name. Metal World. Metal, Metal World. World. Yeah, Metal World. Rap. 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 Yeah. Yeah. True Warrior Records. Yeah. I, yeah. Did, I did a Gangsta Girls yeah. with him too. You did a Gangsta Girls with him? Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. Right. Metal World Peace. Another athlete whose son played ball too. Hey, you know what? Hey, Spank, you right. And so, and even though he already said it, drum. Yes, I do want to do a Gangsta Grill. So can can we say this on camera? It's on camera. It's, it's how we gonna end it off. Yeah, you trying Gangsta to, Grills on the way? Yeah, you trying to sweep it up under the rug like yo? If you bored? No, because let me <laughs> tell you. Let, let I I unpack it real quick in thirty yeah. seconds. Moral to the story is mm. I'm better than a lot of these motherfuckers. Talk I don't shit. put yeah. my. I just don't put my shit out. And if I'm not in the mood to put it out, mm. it ain't coming out. That's true. Like, if I'll send a record to Dre, I'll be like, yo, I want to get this record serviced. If it don't happen in, like, the next seven days... Right, then you out of there. I'm not going to follow up on it. So I'm tired of this shit sitting in my phone. What better way to put it out than the appropriate way? There you go. It's only right. Making it happen. That's the only reason why you invited him. Let's keep it real. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> No, nah, no, job. This is good, though. I love this. Man, I'm glad we sat back down because somebody tried to end this shit all early. You did the right thing, bro. I've been telling you I'm following your lead, nigga. I don't know why you let me keep being in charge. <laughs> because you go out of nowhere. Hey, man, it's been a great set. Great show. I'm like, damn, bro. You didn't give me the eye now. Like, y'all hey, about to wrap you know it up. what? I don't, I don't, I, I still look at myself as the talent, and I right. know if I'm in his seat. Yeah. Uh, by an hour, I'm like, what the fuck we doing? Right, right. That's how. That's just how I am. Yeah. So before a nigga feel that way about me... But you got to understand this, though. This is relationship-based right here. 100%. That's this agreed. is not like... And you are who you are. Right, right. Y'all are who y'all are. Right. Hey, man, you yeah. know what? Thank y'all. Hey, listen, appreciate y'all mentoring me on this... Uh, I got you. On this new, on this new, on this <laughs> new journalism journey. Tips and advice, I'm here. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. I think Drum told me, he said, hey, man... Supposed to make a motherfucker talk till they tell you wrap it up. Yeah. The nigga just told us to wrap it up. You didn't hear him. He said, I'm going to close out on that. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you, you didn't catch that. <laughs> you know, I've been waiting for the cue. You've been waiting Ever for the since cue? he told me what the cue was, I've been waiting for it. Now we got it. Nigga, close us out, man. <laughs> hey, man, it's been another fabulous episode, man, of the Underground Lounge with me, Spank Horn, and your boy Lou Will, and our special, special guest from yes, Philly, sir. representing the ATL as well, DJ motherfucking drop. Mr. Thanksgiving! Uh. Let's get it! Uh. Hey, man, make sure y'all tune in, man. You know, this is what we do. Subscribe! What else they say? What else they say? Subscribe. Subscribe. Like, like, and comment. Come on, let's get it! Yeah.